So we're back to looking at episodes of Yu Yu Hockey Show with, ep with episodes 31 through 35. With, let's look, get started with episode, with episode called Stumbling Warrior, The Drunken Warrior, Chu's Sin Ken. Uh, this, the double that came out on April 14th, 2003. Yusuke vs. Chu, the loudmouth drunken leader of Team Yu Yusuke. I cannot pronounce that word, I'm sorry. Both love a good brawl, and as they confront each other's personal power, a mutual respect develops to pen. This good, clean fight is pretty much to the death. This one is good in that it could be goofy with Chu, and that he would be a goober on the ring announcer. Both fighters use their special beliefs, but I do find it kind of funny that when Chu is drink is just drinking to get stronger and eventually goes like the entire audience can only wait in a hush as two reveal <laughs> what yeah tell me he didn't pay money to see this now basically just pukes out but then that's when he gets his full potential i thought the fight against point this one was pretty good pretty entertaining so next one was Knife Edge Death Match. Um, the double that came out on April 17th, 2003. With their spirit edges depleted, Yusuke and Shu agreed to settle things in the Knife Edge Death Match. An in your face bare knuckle slugfest where a naked back heel is kept po posed before a knife blade in the ground. The first one to lose ground and step back gets cut. I thought this one was great in that it was just a fist fight. Yurameshi has to fight Tagura again. And more than that, he wants to. You see, Keiko, it's our only chance to settle this. Then and only then we'll know who's stronger than who. And that is why I owe it to Yurameshi not to step in there now and save his life. Really? <laughs> <laughs> between the other, and I kind of liked the ending in that Yusuke yells at the demons when they are giving him shit for not ending Shu, and they both come out at the end of respecting each other, and that Shu is say, hey, please end me, and uh, Yusuke goes like, say, nah, man, we're good, we don't need to do that. I thought, I thought like, saying this episode, I think Yusuke, um, you know, like, finally became, like, a fighter, where, like, even though he's not, like, wanting to end someone, uh, he's actually, like, say, holding back, but at the same time, holding it back enough to be able to say, okay, like, I'm just gonna want to get you to come down. Someone was called A Day in Waiting Clash. The best eight are decided. April 18th, 2003. As the tournament moves on with other fighters, Team Yurameshi gets a break and separates Yusuke to wonder why his spirit gun hasn't returned. He had to work through the disuse of one burned out arm, uh, Kirama to scope out the other figures, and uh, Kirama has wondered who their masked fifth team member is. Meanwhile, uh, Tagoro gets to impress the crowd. Um, there is like a moment when, um, like say both Yusuke and them are basically just almost I think they are, um, I think, you know, at one point they are basically just atta attacked before and all that. Um, and this, also in the, the core, Tagora, he still frets in that he's not to be messed with. And he punches, he punches a hole through a guy in the, uh, in the arena. And I find, like, like, there was a moment, like, say, Black Goo comes out and find, like, say, you know, if that wouldn't happen, that could have been blood. And I just thought, oh my god, that would have been just, like, you know, too much probably for uh, this show. Yeah, this episode is good, and that shows how much strong he's become, and it's the last time he appeared, and that's actually pretty cool, and it shows, okay, both uh, Kirabara and Yusuke have gotten stronger, but so has Tor 
Tagora. But I know I'm pronouncing his name wrong. I apologize about it. So let's keep on moving on. Percentage of victory. A desperate battle with a 0.5 chance of winning. April 19th, 2003. Two demon fighters on team Yusuke Ichiga, Kipihe, and Kirama busy beyond the arena, leaving their human counterparts to handle Yusuke, Kurobara, and the mass fighter after the team owner strikes an odd bargain, bargain with Yusuke for his body. The backstory for the, the fighters that Yusuke's team has to fight is very intriguing, you know, for the characters in that they are going through loss and trauma and that they wish they could be stronger to protect their master. And in a way, the doc, who is basically their doctor, who is basically in, tra in charge of them, he's basically trying to say, hey, uh, come with me and I'll be able to make you stronger. Um, but in my opinion, like the whole, um, like, you know, villain of this episode is not the fighters eh, specifically, even though, yes, they are fighting both um, Kira uh, Kirabara and Yusuke, but it's the doctor himself in a way. But the fight scenes for the episode are pretty exciting. And the friendship between Hihei and Hirama is always fun to watch. Since character-wise, they work off so well to each other. In the fact that both of them, uh, character-wise, um, yeah, they're not usually ones that are, willing, are mostly like goofballs that are wanting to work off. They're more of characters that are just like, okay, this is serious and all that. And, you know, they... They work off each other pretty well. I like them. So, yeah. So, Glimpse Beneath the Mask. The Identity of Mask. A Beautiful Warrior. April 20th, 2003. He's getting Kurabara. Feel sorry for the three human uh, team Ichigaki fighters who are totally controlled against their will. But sympathies for the opponent's plight may get Team Urameshi killed. Meanwhile, a disguise rips open and everyone gets a glimpse of the mysterious mass fighter for the first time, which ends up only deepening the mystery. I do wonder who the young fighter helping is. I did at first fight Liz Ginkai because, you know, that's the only character who we have seen so far in the show who um, was a bit shorter, so it feels like, huh, maybe it could still be Ginkai, but she has, you know, um, anyway shrunk, you know, like, um, you know, use, her, like, age to herself down. Uh, and that the idea of, like, the team can't fight the opposing team and has to go in defense, you know, gives it a bit of, like, say, huh, like, it shows, okay, um, like, even though we are trying to stay alive, that they are willing to, um, you know, you know, not really wanting to hurt the opposer. And the doctor is a truly sick doc, and he seems like a character from a very dark, old school horror film. And the episode truly shows how great of a, of a character Kirabara is, and the fact that he is willing to just uh, lunge at them, but at the same time, instead of, like, you know, using their, his, their fist, you know, in a hug, or, like, you know, trying to get them to, like, say, hey, I'm not going to fight back, I'm not going to hurt you, but I want to tell you I'm there for you. And yeah, I feel like, say, uh, Kirabara as a character, he's really a positive, like, you know, like, role mo like, male character in the AM that shows, like, say, hey, he's a fighter, but he's at the same time, like, a character you can say, hey, this is a character that is a positive idea for, you know, like, I, I don't know, positive masculinity or something, but I find him pretty good. I love how, at the end of it, uh, like, Kurobara gets kicked out of it, and then he, like, um, Yusuke's basically power level goes up, and then he is going to say, oh, no more, and then, um, he, basically all his spirit energy goes up, and he's just fighting back, and it's like, okay, and now I'm excited for the next episode. But overall, I thought these episodes were pretty good.